Yes, sir. Uh, welcome to welcome, welcome to uh, the City Bank of Bangers Special Council meeting on the tenth of September. I'd like to. Uh, this is a public meeting and will be recorded and published to the Council's website approximately 48 hours after the conclusion of the meeting and will remain on the Council's website. Audio and vision of any persons making a deputation and visions of persons present in the gallery will be captured in the recording. Uh, and if everyone would oblige, I'd like to stand up so we can read the pledge. We recognise this city's considerable natural and cultural heritage, including thousands of years of traditional ownership by Ghana and the more recent contribution from people either born here or who have migrated here. As we meet together, we build on this heritage by respecting and listening to each other, thinking clearly, being receptive to new ideas, speaking honestly and deciding wisely for the current and future well-being of those who serve. Thank you, everyone. So the first and only item that we have tonight is 2.1, the draft representation review report. Members, I think we will benefit to suspend formal proceedings to allow some informal discussion on this item and a presentation from Tracy Riddle um, to I have leave of the meeting. Thank you. And I'd also like to remind members that this is recorded and so that anything you do say will be made public. Thank you. Just briefly to recap uh, in terms of the background from the previous workshops that we have had, uh, from the questionnaires that were distributed, that was the initial feedback in terms of starting to formulate the three options that you have before you tonight to consider. Uh, particularly um, very strong uh, sentiment from the Chamber in terms of retaining the words, obviously retaining the Council name, uh, and uh, retaining the existing number of councillors. The only then discussion was around um, the number of wards, but certainly the current arrangement had the broadest support. Since the uh, most recent workshop, we did receive some updated figures. And um, we'll probably recall I mentioned every three months or so the Electoral Commissioner updates the electoral numbers in the council area. So they are your current updated figures um, as of they are from June uh, this year, 2024. Uh, and certainly we can still see that uh, part of the process will be to make sure that we bring particularly mid coast um, back within. Um, those allowable tolerances under section 33, which is the plus or minus 10%. And um, Thalassa is obviously quite close as well. That amendment has been made to the report. Um, that paragraph spoke about mid coast twice, but uh, it's Thalassa that's getting close there as well. So in terms of the modelling that was done, um, <clears throat> again, uh, so in terms of those, again, the feedback received, uh, we have amended the, the way that the variations are expressed so that they are, so you can see there, the expression of the variations is um, as compared to the average of electors across the council area. So the maps modelling have been changed to rep represent that as well. So effectively where you see a minus it's a plus and vice versa, obviously whichever option you go with, that's the map that we will put into the draft report for your consideration for consultation processes. So version one um, is there uh, for your review in terms of what has been proposed. Uh, under that version, obviously, um, Aldinga is kept within um, the South Coast Ward as a full um, ward, uh, sorry, as a full um, suburb. And um, what was the other one? Old Rinella has been moved from Knox to Pimpala. And old, yeah, old Rinella from Knox to Pimpala. And yeah. Darlington and Harrow into Pimpala. And Darlington and Harrow Hill into Thalassa on that one. Then again in version two, um, um, so it's 
it is precisely the same amendments, although this time we've got the whole suburb of Aldinga that has been placed into the Southern Vales Ward instead of the South Coast Ward. Um, again, those tolerances are obviously well within the plus or minus um, 10%. Uh, the other amendments we just spoke about are the same then, so it's just that Aldinga uh, amendment that is made there. And then when we look at version three, again, we've got Aldinga back into the South Coast Ward. This time I have on Hill is in the Pimpala Ward. So that's the main differences between the three options that have been provided. Uh, and certainly all of them fit within those tolerances as well. We sent all three of those options through to Olivia um, Hanna at uh, the Electro Electoral Commission, who is overseeing the review processes. And um, that's her feedback there. So certainly her feedback was from the electoral modelling perspective. The options are all sound based on the data. So they were happy with um, each of those. Um, they did consider that, that that third option, that the incorporation of O'Halloran Hill into Pimpala, seemed the most logical in the ge geographical context, but they were still happy with versions one or two as well. Um, and then in terms of that Excel document was just the figures that were being used. So there's no issue with that. Obviously, Aldinga is kept as a full suburb in each of those options. So that uh, is sort of where we are in terms of uh, feedback. Um, obviously, those the, each of those maps have been uh, formulated on the basis of what we spoke about at the workshops. So um, your desire to try and keep suburbs in the same ward and to not split them across the wards. Um, some of the other topics that we got for feedback uh, around suburb name changes, that's something that falls out of this process. So that's something that we can't consider that as part of this. There were some questions around the impact of the new development um, on the process. Certainly the view of the Electoral Commission is, you know, effectively, unless we have got houses with people sort of ready to move in, that is not something that we need to take into account too much as part of this process. Uh, that is why the council is required to undertake a uh, representation review every eight years, it's so it can reconsider um, those types of movements uh, across electoral numbers in the council area um, every period. Uh, and again, it's also to be noted that um, even though you know we might have a number of uh, additional households coming online, that doesn't mean that we have the same number of electors coming in as well, because um, the electors are those that are on the House of Assembly role and those that are registered on the Council's um, role as well. So we have got some feedback from um, the Council's development section, but um, certainly there is nothing that will impact uh, these uh, options that have been prepared in terms of those numbers. Um, I had mentioned, you know, if, for example, there, there was a sort of influx, and that's not the case here for this council, uh, if it's only when we sort of reach over that sort of 20% tolerance that the Electoral Commission would start to look at wanting the council to, to review its boundaries again. Certainly, you can see under the modelling in each of those three options, we're not going to get anywhere near that during this um, review process. Um, so then the only other feedback was there, there was obviously um, some feedback around other potential boundary realignments uh, in addition to those maps as well. So is there any questions in relation to the maps that have been provided um, or the process generally? Well, in terms of the process generally, uh, as you might recall from the last workshop, the process has actually streamlined. So that draft report that you have effectively um, once you as a chamber determine which of these options is your preference, we and you'll see that there's quite a bit of highlighting in that report as well because we also at your next meeting you will look at what your public consultation methodology will be. But once we then have that final draft report, that's a report that we go out then for the purposes of the public consultation process. There is no longer an options paper. So we just put in the, the one option. So that effectively the map that you choose in terms of moving forward as part of your um, composition and structure of the council is what goes into that report for consultation. Thank you, Tracy. Sorry. Yes. You see? Yes. Yep. <laughs> Councillor Yeomans. Thank you. We'll say the into um, uh, the versions and the maps. Can I just sort of ask if we can just, from my point of view anyway, just change, on, on page 24, where there's a, 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 um, uh, a spreadsheet that outlines all the other councils and their, uh, the representation that they've got. Um, the third dot point, you know, that reading the whole thing out, it says each councillor feels that their workload is appropriate and manageable. So if it just just to please me, because I don't think it is appropriate and manageable, this is this is a full-time job. 
um, how some of the young mums here, um, some of those that are working, um, can balance the competing interests is, is beyond me. I take my hat off to you. I'm retired. If I get anything, any hours out of 40 hours left, um, I'm pretty happy about that for the week. So I don't think that's the case. So whether you want to change it to say, if, if the view is most councillors agree, that's fine. But when you're saying each, you're including everybody. And from my point of view anyway, that's that's not the case. So through the chair, uh, it can be deleted if that's the preference of the chamber as well. So what the, the purpose of those figures are effectively are really aimed at councils uh, that might be looking, for example, at increasing the number of members that it might have in the chamber. Um, you are already at the elected member cap. So in terms of if you wanted to increase your, your representation in the council area, that would have to be a very different report because it would be looking at making application for an exemption. So what we do in terms of that modelling is just really show what we're trying to demonstrate is, you know, to the electoral commissioner, we certainly don't want to be losing numbers as part of this process because the council has to equally turn its mind to that. Um, so that's why we put it in there because we show as a council area, you certainly do have a lot of electors compared to other council areas. Uh, but certainly um, that sentence does not add or subtract from that position at all, and so it can be removed. Councillor Pritchard, uh, just a, a question about Table 2, which is on page 31, uh, proposed new dwellings. But it does look like the Pimpala ward numbers are wrong. Um, they seem to have less than half the population of the next biggest ward. We can certainly go and check those. Um, they're the figures that came through. Um, in terms, they, they even need the additional dwelling numbers. You were in the total dwelling, total population 2032 is only 16,948 compared to everyone else above 32,000. So additional. That's it. We'll go and check that. But yeah, certainly, uh, on my understanding, that's the additional, num additional numbers, but we will review that. Councillor Eaton. Councillor Yeah, look, um, table two on page um, 24 really does demonstrate to the community that we're actually the least represented council in the state. And I think that's a message that uh, we're not overdoing ourselves compared to other councils. Um, and people have got to understand that's got an impact on, uh, on people's work. I, was, I had a bit of a query. I, I was just liking... We'd have liked to work out um, where we're going to get this extra 1,045 properties in Thalassa Ward. Are we looking at subdivision of land or are we suggesting that the development at the uh, Flagstaff golf course is going to add to that, contribute to that? My understanding from infill, and also um, that is projected out to 2032 as well over that period of time. Yeah. Does anyone else have any discussion that they'd like to add to the conversation? This is your opportunity. All right. That's good. Just in respect to the uh, the uh, electors in uh, Clarendon, have we got any idea of the number of those? I'm just, you know, it's just a. It was one of the proposals that I talked about was that um, Clarendon could be considered to go to Southern Vales, and it might uh, impact on their representation and build it up a little bit, particularly when you look at um, the issues around Aldinga. So the current figure is held by the council is 495 electors in the Clarendon area. So if that, when you look at the tolerances, so if 
495 came out of uh, Thalassa and he's saying put them into southern vales. Um, it, so the tolerances would still be met if that was to be done. If you don't have anything further, I would uh, like to move back into formal council proceedings uh, and I'll be looking for a mover. Councillor Nathaniel Lotus. Happy to move back into formal proceedings. Thank you. Any... That's not a motion. Councillor Eden. Thank you. Oh, thank you. No. No. So now we're doing this, yeah. Now we're looking at item 2.1, the draft representation review report, and I'm looking for a mover of that report. That's the future. Okay, I'll move it then. Okay, I'll go with uh, option one. Would you like to speak to that? No. Thank you. Councillor Eden. And I'll certainly second it. Thank you. And would you like to speak to it? I'll put it to the vote. All, right, all in favour? Oh, hang on, that's a picture. Sorry, Sorry mate. Councillor Pritchard. I was going to debate. Yes. Um, I was just going to say that I was originally going down the path of trying to make the maths work the best on this. And so the trying to uh, look at all the options and whichever one provided the most equitable population per ward once we decided that we were going with six wards and no suburb splits. Um, but now believe that the best way to is to look at how you can represent people the best and make it fit the maths second, which is unusual for me. Um, and so for that reason, I was going to support option three because I think that the representation of some of the boundaries looks um, a lot neater uh, and things like Aldinga being part of South Coast makes more sense to the Aldinga um, residents, uh, in my opinion, um, than having them as per option two, which would be better from a maths point of view, but um, possibly doesn't represent appropriately. And in a similar way, I think what Councillor Ian was talking about with Clarendon being the only township that's not represented by Southern Vales, uh, having Clarendon as a as a Southern Vales uh, inclusion would also have been a, a good step. So, um, yeah, for that reason, I was going to support option three. Thank you. Councillor Wilkes. Thank you, my co-councillor, Acting Mayor. Um, I was just wanting to speak on behalf of Mid Coast Ward. Uh, we were over variation and over over quoted by quite a bit. So I just wanted to say that we will um, be sad to see uh, Renella leave, but I think um, it's really great that we've got more of a balanced approach for us. And I, I hope the other ward councillors are happy with what they have received as well. Thank you very much. Uh, if that's all from the floor, I'd like to put it to the vote. No, oh, it's yeah, not. Councillor Young. Can I just ask a question? Um, Councillor Pritchard just mentioned that Clarendon was on one of those versions. No, I'm not. No, it's not. no, he just said that he, he'd like it. He'd like it. Okay, I just so want to, I want to clarify that. Oh, well, it's not in there. Let's make it clear. I don't want to get it to say. No? Right, third time lucky. Uh, and put it to the vote. All in favour? And all against? Thank you very much. Uh, now I would 
right to close the meeting. Thank you for coming.